In this video, we'll see how to enter displacement vectors into Python. Start by opening up Python Idle. Then, click on File Open and find the file that we were working with last time with the rotation matrices. This code enters the two rotation matrices for the two degree of freedom manipulator that we have built on our board right now. As a reminder, the two displacement vectors we're trying to enter into our code look like this. They have one column and three rows. In Python, we have to enclose each row in its own set of brackets. Let's do D01. I first create one set of brackets to enclose the entire matrix or the entire vector. Then I'll create another set of brackets for the first row. The first row in a displacement vector has only one element, and here it is the value of A2, the link length, times the cosine, which we do by np.cosine, of theta1. Now we haven't yet given a value to the variable a2 and that's okay. Before we run this code we'll go back up and give a value to a2. For now put a comma after this first row and a new set of square brackets for row 2. Row 2 in this displacement vector is a2 times the sine of theta 1. Finally, let's do the last row. We'll do a comma and then square brackets and the last row is just a1. Let's go up to the top and give some values to a1 and a2. For now, I'm just going to give the value 1 to both of these variables. It doesn't matter what units you use to measure these things, but you need to keep track of what units you used so that you know what the output means. Here, I'm going to assume that we're going to measure these things in units of centimeters. Now, let's test this to make sure everything looks okay. After we compute D01, let's do print D01 so that we can look at the output. Then, click on Run, Run Module. We get the output for R02, which we calculated last time. Then we get the output for D01. It looks right now like D01 is a row instead of a column, but that's just a function of how Python prints things out. Let's make it look a little bit nicer. First, let's comment out the printing of R02 to make this less confusing. Put a hashtag symbol in front of print R02 so that when we run it next time, this line will not execute. Then, down here where we're printing D01, let's add in np.matrix and then parentheses around D01. This will make D01 print out in a way that looks more like the matrix that it is, or the vector that it is. Do run run module. That looks better. Now D01 appears to be a vector with one column and three rows. Now let's put in D12 also because we're going to need that as we continue to use this code. 
as a reminder, D12 looks like this. So we'll start by creating some square brackets for the whole vector, then some square brackets for row 1. Row 1 is A4 times the cosine of theta 2. Next, we'll do row 2. Row 2 is A4 times the sine of theta 2. And then the third row is A3. Now let's go back up to the top and create these variables. Once again, I'm just going to set them to the value of 1 right now. In a future video, we're going to actually find these values for the manipulator we built and use it to control the manipulator. Let's also test our D12. So down here in the print command, let's just change this to D12 and run the code. Make sure that you get some numbers out and you don't get any kind of an error. As long as your code is working correctly, we're done with this part of building our code. In the next videos, we're going to learn how to put the rotation matrix and the displacement vector together into one single matrix that can tell us both the rotation and the position of our end effector.